Hi, everybody. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback with Gerald Salenti, founder and director of the Trends Research Institute. He's a famous forecaster who, by the way, I don't know if you know, you were on one of my very first radio shows of all time in 2008. Do you remember this? Before Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin, you had said there would be a cashless society coming. And people didn't even know what you were talking about. And here we are. What prompted you back then? I do want to talk about your background and all that. But what prompted you in 2008 to prophesy a cashless economy? What really did it was the, um, the, the internet revolution began only, you know, like 1994. And we started seeing more and more of it, you know, developing and how you know, people would be very happy going digital in diff many different ways. But what really changed it was in, um, I took out the domain name, the Panic of 08 in 2007. And the whole game was being rigged uh, in the subprime mortgages, all the derivatives. And I, I said to myself, they're going to come up with something to bail this thing out in a way that's going to create uh, a lot of fake money. And at some point, this thing is going to bust. And they're going to come out with a digital currency because the paper currency isn't going to be worth anything. So they're going to keep moving more and more and more toward digital. And number two, the thing was that they want to know every penny that you spent, what you spent it on, where you spent it. So they have all the information they need about you to most importantly, steal your money in the name of taxes and also to be in charge of your life to know more about you so this again this is really the beginning of the internet revolution and so that was the that was the emotion that really set me into thinking about why do you think people you know back in the day you know people would have cash under their mattress you, you felt good about it you know the the uh old italian guys from new york that, that was where they put it. Or in, the, or in the rafters. How do we go from a country of the greatest generation, you know, the boys who won World War II, to now people allowing the government to trace every transaction we have on Venmo? Now people are willingly saying, I know that my brother, for example, bought lottery tickets on Venmo. How do we do that? And how do we, will we ever get the privacy back? It's gone. It's totally gone. Uh, they know everything you do, everything. We, it, it's finished. Again, you know, the, the King James Bible says that the meek shall inherit the earth. They misspelt it. The geeks have inherited the earth. I mean, people had digitized, you know, before we went on the air, I said, I, I don't carry a cell phone. People have become totally addicted to this. Again, as an older cat used to walk down the street, you know, and say hello to people. Now everybody's like this. It's their world. And by the way, governments are doing it. India, it, it, it's one of the poorest nations in the world, but everybody's paying digital, 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 digital. Same thing happening in China. They're all going to go digital. And here's the bottom line of this, by the way. I was, we were very bullish on Bitcoin from the very beginning, and we're still bullish on it. Cryptocurrencies are going to end when banks go central bank digital currency. They're not going to want to get any competition. That's the way we see it. Any, but that's, that's down the road a ways. What about people say, well, look, well, you get blockchain that will be impervious to an assault by government. So like you get the Bitcoiners. 70,000, uh, what, what is 70,000 miners? It would essentially take all of the military power of the US and every country combined. They would have to have like a war against Bitcoin to bring it down. This is a cover of the Trends Journal going back to 2012. Yeah. And the cover, if you're not watching it, you have Jesus whipping the bankers. Who's he whipping? Well, you got the good J.P. Morgan Chase, the Goldman Sachs gang. Nothing's changed. They're in charge. They're running the show. Hey, look, anybody with a brain bigger than a P, let's get the story right. Who's your Fed? Who's, who's the Treasury Secretary? 
Janet Yellen. Hey, what was the last job? Oh, I was playing Fed head. Oh, wait a minute. You mean the Fed head, the Treasury secretary? You got it. I thought the Fed was independent. Yeah, they're independent. They own the country. They own the country. Look, you know, a great site to go to, by the way, is called Wall Street on Parade. Uh, Pam and Russ Martins. They put out the stuff of the criminality in this group. Look, J.P. Morgan Chase, five felonies. Convicted. Five felonies. Hey, I'm Jamie Diamond. Oh, you know who I am? It's okay. You, 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 pull over. Your, your backlight wasn't on. How many drinks did you have? Stand on your head. Repeat the alphabet backwards. You go to jail. Hey, that's all right. We get five felonies. Nothing happens to us. Five felonies, including rigging the precious metals market. 2019, they paid the grand total of $900 million. Nothing, nothing. Five felonies. Get it straight, everybody. It's a crime syndicate that people call a government. They own everything. The banksters, the military industrial complex, the geeks, and and the drug dealers. Oh, excuse me, big pharma. They're in control. Is there any hope? We need a news. They got to say, you know, Biden just had uh, Obama and Clinton over here in New York raise $26 million. Trump just had something down there in Florida raise $50 million. It's it's a money game. What, what democracy? You got a little clown boy like Beto O'Rourke over there in Texas. We ran for governor. A little jerk of nothing. A hundred million dollars to lose. All right. If we don't have a new government, the same clowns, little jerks have been running the show all our lives. The Democrats and the Repulsivkins. It's a crime syndicate. They're, they're murderers and thieves. And, they, and, they, and by the deeds you show them. Hey, I, I just mentioned about the banking system. We talked about 2008. $29 trillion, $29 trillion, the Federal Reserve dumped into the banksters to bail them out because of their lousy derivative deals and subprime mortgage scam. $29 trillion. Oh, that's not my number. That comes from the Levy Institute of Bard College. You are known with the Trends Journal as being one of the leading forecasters, and you're known for your kind of bombastic way and talking straight. But I found that your track record of kind of deciphering what's going to happen in the future, I, I don't know if, I, I obviously think you're one of the best forecasters that, so I look at your stuff to say, well, what is the trend financially? What do you see down the horizon? I know you've talked about World War III. It, it's, it's already begun. It's already begun. There's going to be a, a false flag event, something major, we're, we're going to war. I hit, we'll go back to the economy. It's very simple. Look at our top trends for 2024. Came out on January 2nd. Number one, golden year for gold. Oh, how much are gold prices up since then? 15, 16%. Tracking trends is the understanding where we are, how we got here, and where we're going. We are headed now for the worst banking crisis in the history of the world, part one and part two. Let's go back to the COVID war. January 2020, Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, they launched it. All right. Get back in your house. You can't go to work. Get back in your house. Now, people are staying at home week after week, month after month, year after year. And they're saying to themselves, holy Christ, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to commute an hour and a half each way. I'm not going to do this anymore. I, I got to be out of my mind. Now I'm the guy that oh, said I got 10 stories in an office building. I got everybody in cubicles down there. I don't see them anyway. Yes, yeah, stay home. I don't need all this space. All right? We, we had forecast in May of 2020 that there's going to be an office building bust. As we are speaking, Google it up, Castle Systems with a K. I just put up before we went on the air. Your office occupancy rate, meaning people going into the offices, 48%. Percent. Forty eight percent. Now, let's now let's go to vacancy rates, meaning empty buildings. New York City. Twenty three percent vacant. 
Portland, Oregon, 29% vacant. Let's take the average, 20%. This is the data. Okay. Now, I own the office building. How am I going to pay? How am I going to, am I going to pay my, my, my mortgage, my loans? I'm not. Let's go back a year ago around this time. Silicon Valley con man bank went bust. Oh, Signature, Val Signature Bank. Oh, First Republic. Oh, my God. Mo markets go down. Gold goes up. Three banks. Right now, you got almost $2 trillion in commercial real estate debt coming due in the next year and a half. The number are, is almost 300 banks are facing difficulties of failure on these loans. And what the, the banks are doing now, by the way, they're extending the loans, but and they're doing it. It's, it's a fake job because these are revolving loans and the interest rate. And now the interest rates have gone way up from when the time they bought these things. You're going to see a banking bust the likes we've never seen before. And again, it's not only the office buildings that are going bust. It's all of the businesses that used to depend on commuters. Everything has changed. This is serious. And they're not talking about it because they know how bad it is. So it goes back to, again, we don't give financial advice. We call the trends as they are. When we talk about gold, three reasons gold among the three. Number one, we said there's going to be an increase, one of our top trends, Middle East meltdown. You're, now you're looking at Brent crude, for example, was $73 a barrel not too long ago. Now it's not over $90 a barrel, and it's heating up over there. Inflation goes up. Gold prices go up. Number two, the war. The war, is, it's going on. You got maniacs in charge. What's your favorite war? World War II? No, I like the, the Korean War. I like the Peloponnesian War. No, the War of Roses was lovely. They got nuts running the world. They don't care. This thing's going to escalate. Again, you read the Trends Journal, you get it. it. We kept saying over and over and over, watch out for a false flag event happening in Ukraine. They're going to bomb a nuclear power plant. We've been saying this now only for about eight months. Oh, they just bombed one. They're going to take us to war. Number three, they're going to lower interest rates, even though they say they're not going to. Because again, the Fed head, former Fed heads playing our treasury secretary, and they want to keep the people in power in power. They're going to lower interest rates to boost up the economy or hope to keep boosting it up in the run up to the presidential election in November. That's why gold prices are going to go up. Do you like gold continued through the year? Yeah, I could see gold almost hitting 3,000. And again, the reason why gold prices aren't higher, oh, again, the lower interest rates go, the weaker the dollar goes. The lower the dollar goes, the higher gold prices go because gold, it, it, it's dollar-based, so it's cheaper in other nations to buy gold. And again, looking at the big picture, China. We had forecast that the 20th century was the American century, but the 21st century would be the Chinese century because the business of China is business and the business of America has become war. You look at their GDP, it's like this. They come in two weeks after 9-11 officially, it skyrockets. With every boom, there's a bust. There's always open speculation. Chinese economy was overbuilt on the real estate sector, which accounts, according to some of the data, for 30% of the GDP. And now you're seeing all the failures it was overbuilt, and then three years made a very bad situation terrible. So what's going on? China's the number one buyer of gold, and the Chinese people, nope, they're not buying those luxury goods anymore. Retail sales of gold in China have gone up 24% this year. So the people are feeling the pain. Now, gold prices could easily hit $3,000. But what's keeping gold prices down also is the inflation rates around the world. So you take a place like Argentina, Venezuela. You're looking at inflation in, Argen in Venezuela, in Argentina, what, 250%? People can't afford to buy gold, but I'll buy a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of a sixteenth of Bitcoin. That's what's driving the price up of this stuff. People are looking at their value of their currencies crashing. And so they're going into anything else they can. If there was no Bitcoin, 
gold would be much, much higher. And you see the uh, rise in Bitcoin continue to for how long? Uh, until, again, until they go, the banks seriously go central bank digital currency. Until then, we see it keep going up. And again, look what happened. Let's go back. It was about 2018, 2017, when China banned it. China banned it. Didn't stop it. Because go to other countries and keep doing it. You could, you could swing around it. But it, it brought it down when they first did it. So it's not going to, we see it going up until they stop it. And again, it's a gambling game. Gold, we don't look at as a gambling game at all. It's, it's, it, it's, been the, it's been the number one safe haven asset forever. And it's not going away. So you like gold, you like Bitcoin. What other opportunities do you see for people's money? We're not giving investment advice over the airwaves, but I always like hearing your take on the economy in relation to trends that you foresee. Do you like oil or do you think oil will go down? It's kind of high right now. Oil's going to go up. Oil's definitely going to go up. And here's the, here's the sad part of it. If, I'm not going to say if, when, the United States and Israel versus Iran conflict escalates, should it continue to escalate, oil, Brent crude, could hit $130 a barrel. And that will crash the global economy and the equity markets. They can't, they can't take it. The average person, again, you know, the data is just coming out, you know, and again, I got to read all this stuff every day about the um, credit card delinquency rates were worst on record in Fed study. It just came out on Bloomberg. All right. So the average person is is really being hit hard and they can't afford this. And um, it, it it's terrible. So I'm very concerned. Yeah. Oil prices, I would if, as in the betting game. I bet they go up. Do you see a stock market crash on the horizon? Yes, because the stock market crash is going to happen when the commercial real estate sector becomes a reality, the crisis that is existing. Look, again, we're talking person to person, man to man. Let's let's talk about the office building bust. Has anybody ever seen anything like this? Anything, anytime, where people aren't going back to work? Again, we began this by talking about going digital. Again, I'm zooming. We're zooming. It's a digital world. Back in the old day, it would have been different. They send a car up, they'd be down in New York City. People are working from home. I'm the person that owns the, the that that that's the, the tenant. I don't need all this space. I'm going to save money. We've never seen a crisis like the office building bust. Well, last year they said. They said, hey, we'll give banks an unlimited blank check overnight. Remember that weekend? It goes back to gold now. What's the, what, what's the debt in the United States nearing $35 trillion? What, how, what, 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 going up a trillion dollars every hundred days goes back to gold. When they lower interest rates, this is going to be the beginning of the death of the dollar. The world has had enough of the United States geopolitical and economic hegemony. They're finished with it. The Bre Brexit's going to keep growing. The, 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 dollar, the dollar's going to keep going down. There's no question about it. The, you, you get, well, could, look at the debt level. And then when you put the real debt into it, it was like $260 trillion when you put Social Security all this other stuff into it. Yeah, so no, they, there's no way they're going to get out of this. And the and the and inflation is going to keep going up. We're going to go into what we call dragflation, declining economies, dragging down, and rising inflation. So why do you think the stock market's up? Stock market's going to go up because it's, a, again, 1% owns 54% of it. They're in control of the game. And they're going to do everything they can to keep pumping it up. And it's, not, it's going to be a crisis that brings it down. 1%, by the way, in the whole world, owns 43% of the equity markets, private equity markets. 1%, 43%, United States, 1%, 54%. When you put to 10%, it's 90%. So you got, you got the hedge funds, the private equity groups, they're running, private equity groups, by the way, three of them only, three of them own like 10% of the big banks. Three private equity groups own 10% of the big banks. You got me thinking about private equity being a major risk. Similar to... 
the risk of the commercial real estate problem because a lot of what people don't realize private equity used the free, cheap, and easy money, 0% interest rates to buy companies, lever them with debt through leveraged buyouts. So what happened to the great American companies like Brooks Brothers and Toys R Us? Basically, these private equity tycoons, they take good brands, good companies, then they would get loans against them, and now they're driving these companies out of business. That's kind of another problem of this commercial real estate. A lot of these companies are going under. What, what do you think about that? No, you, what you're saying is 100% right. What, you, what you're telling people is very important, what they do. They make their money, and then they, they, the places go bust. Again, it, it's, it, 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 uh, they're going to do everything they can to bail them out, but it's not going to work. And again, this isn't only in the United States. It's, it's in a lot of parts of Europe. I mean, was that, that Canary Wharf over there in, in the UK? They're all pulling out of there. Again, the, 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 the lockdowns, what they've done, and again, not only financially, but again, I got to write about this crap, how the kids are out of their minds now, how they're not going back to school. Again, if I was a little kid and, I, and, and, and they made me stay home from school during the COVID war, I hated every day of school as it was. I wouldn't want to go back again either. By the way, the same lousy SOB that should rot in hell that gave us World War I, Woodrow Wilson, that gave us the Federal Reserve, Woodrow Wilson, and that gave us income, federal income tax, Woodrow Wilson invented the government school system. That tells you a lot. That tells you a lot. Here's why. It's a very simple math problem. Our government spends more than it takes in. And we got to lower our expenses. It's a whole different world now. It's a whole, you said about the kids, we got to save ourselves now. It's up to us to do it. And I launched Occupy Peace over a decade ago. And we, we have to have, where are the billionaires talking about peace? How come nobody's talking about peace? Nobody's talking about peace. And you're talking about the economy. Look at the, the roads, the bridges, they're crap. Take the subway in New York. It's a night in Calcutta. Yeah, I don't, I used to go to New York every week. I don't go there at all anymore. I have no desire. People are, did you see a couple of weeks ago, there was this segment on the New York news that they're, they're these people, they're just hitting women. And you notice they don't talk about women's rights then, do they? Once upon a time, there was a five-star general, five-star general, Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces and two-term president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who warns the American people that the military industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists and the sweat of the labors, and here we are. Wow, so we, we're going to go to the uh, phone lines. We got Prometheus. Go ahead. Uh, Long-time listener and fan, thank you for being so candid and um, brilliant over the years. Um, I suppose my question is that th we are witnessing events that, to me, seem to be foretold in the Bible. And uh, I think all these things, all the things of man are crumbling down because at some level we're being reoriented towards the only solution, which I believe is a spiritual one at first. It'll have, it'll manifest as economic for sure. And I'm going to get to the economic dimension of this, but I, I believe that, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but, you know, I believe that we do need to turn back to God. We do need to repent and, and you know, whatever we do forwards in terms of reinventing capitalism, reinventing um, industry, uh, especially in the age of artificial intelligence and um, and everything else that we're seeing technologically, blockchain and so on. Um, what do you think about that? What, what do you think about the spiritual dimension of what it is we're fighting? Because it seems to me almost obviously we are facing a demonic and like a demonic force globally. And so the only way to fight against it is to embody um, in to embody God and 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 to work in those dimensions. So what's that thing that's on all in all of the American currencies? What does it say in the back? In God we trust? What, what God? What, the, what God? They talking about? I agree with you hundred percent on on the spirituality. People ask me, "What can I do?" And I say, "Get in the best shape you can. 
physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I agree with you a thousand percent that it's a demonic mentality that's in charge. Because who would keep talking about killing in war? We're, as I said, we're the billionaires putting any money for peace. We need peace. I agree with you. We need a higher spirit of life. Life on earth. Uh, hey, how about this one? They, they may never have me back on again for this, saying this. How about a declaration of independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Happiness? Why? How dare you talk about happiness? Not allowed anymore. Remember, happiness was really private property, where they inserted instead of private property, happiness, because we need private property rights, right? And that, and there is no private property anymore. If you buy a house, you pay it off, you pay off your mortgage, what do you have to pay? Property tax, or else your house gets confiscated by the state. There's an article that just came out about the amount of taxes people pay in each state. It just came out on what's just, I was like, it's like if you live in, in, in um, what is it? Uh, not not Massachusetts. One of the ones, yeah, New Jersey. Yeah, it was like it was like something like almost a million dollars in your lifetime. I know it's insanity. And again, they gave us, they made up this damn thing with federal income tax. I mean, it would be paying around forty percent. It's a it's a crime syndicate. That's what I was saying. Oh, by the way, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I used to run political campaigns in Westchester County. I got a photograph of me picking up Ronald Reagan at the Chicago Hilton. I was the number two guy running a major trade association, putting on a brunch with him and 16 of our board of directors two days before he's announcing he's running against Gerald Ford. I was uh, 30 years old. I've been with presidents, prime ministers, and princes. I've been on the other side. I was a chief government affairs specialist for the chemical industry. I was killing environmental legislation in the 1970s. All I wanted to do was make money. At 28, I was staying at the Willard Hotel, putting my means to hand. So I started to grow up around 32, 33. I've been on the other side. It's disgusting. The people in politics are the people I hated in high school and college that wanted to be class president, the head of the student council. And everybody in the government, all they do is they suck their way up to the top. Countless little boys and girls. And the bureau craps are the worst. These are clown boys and girls that can't get a job in the real world, suck into the political system, and they become the most arrogant. That's what our country has become. I want to bring back the spirit of America. That's what we need a renaissance. We need to bring back what our, what our grandparents and parents, whoever they came from this country, because it was truly the land of opportunity. And that to me is the only, and I agree with the gentleman spirituality. Let's go back to the economy. Although I do agree the key is spirituality, going back to God, faith, family, you know, get married, have babies. I mean, we, we need more and more country. We need more and more citizens in this country because the tax base is slumping, 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 and we're going to all have to pay 60, 70 cents on every dollar. That's why people are talking about it. It's crazy. So anyway, let's uh, talk about more economic forecasts we talked about gold. We talked about Bitcoin. What other opportunities to seize? There's also real estate. You know, real estate's always, you know, depending on where it is and what's going on, you know, it it it, it always has, it has an up note, you know, and um, I, I'm lucky right over here, not very far, almost throw it, hit it with a stone. It's the most historic four corners in America. It's the only place with pre-revolutionary war stone buildings on each corner. Wow. That's Kingston, New York, for those of you who are not familiar with it. And it was the first capital of New York State. The British burnt it down. It was the third Dutch settlement. And I bought three of them in 2012 when the market was down at the bottom. And I bought them because the seeds of democracy were sown here. Uh, right across the street is this, the courthouse where the Constitution for Kingston was written. And this has to do with real estate. And uh, but I didn't buy him for that. But I'm saying why I think people should invest in, you know, consider investing. I'm not telling them what to do. They when they wrote the Constitution for New York for New York State, this was the first capital before the bridge burnt it down. Over seventy percent of America's Constitution came from here. And John Jay, the Supreme Court judge, was a judge over here. 
I bought these buildings because the seeds of democracy were sown here. And I bought them at the bottom of the panic of 08. At the, I, I, bought, I bought, one was vacant for five years. Another one I bought in foreclosure. Now they're worth millions because, again, let's go back to COVID. People were leaving the city. They're buying, when you look it up, Bloomberg, out of 181 cities, more people moved up here percentage wise than anywhere else in the country for a while. So you're going to remember, we, again, putting the trends together. I talked about the office building bust. You were talking about women getting punched in the face, how the subways have become a night in Calcutta. You're going to see more and more people moving out. We had said when interest rates went up, no, there's not going to be a decline in housing prices. We were the only ones that I know who was saying that everybody else said they were going to crash. We said, no, they're not because you have a change going on about here. And also they're going to be moving out because they can't afford to live down there. So they're going to be going to more affordable places. So there's going to be areas for good real estate investment. And again, but then there's the crises that happen. And when that happens, yeah, prices are going to go down. But on the long term, to me, real estate is the one of the most solid investments. So you like real estate, gold, Bitcoin, stocks, because the one percent own it. <laughs> so, that, but that's a that's a very important thing. Maybe you should do a trends journal on that, or a show on that. There's asset price inflation. So much of the game is based upon the electorate feeling good about their four hundred one k and their real estate value. And as long as your real estate's up, your four hundred one k's up. You can tax people 50% and they say, thank you, sir, may I take another, you know. You're talking about cha change. If there was, I don't hear one politician out there saying, this is a lot of crap. We're paying all these taxes to these clowns that are working for government. We got to cut this out immediately. We got to stop this. They had a federal income tax. They made this damn thing up in, in what, in 1913? Like, like, let's stop this. Let's stop this. We're going to cut it back. We're going to cut it back and let's start taxing the billionaires. Let's bring the 90% tax up to them rather than the plantation workers of slave landia, because that's what we become. Any economic trends that we didn't bring up that you'd want to share with our listeners? No, I think we covered it all. Uh, it's particularly, again, the two big ones. Look at the office building bust and the um, banks go bust. Really get your data on it. Go to look it up, look it up, look it up, look it up and and see the, the, the dimensions where it's going. Because, again, there are on trendpreneur opportunities. Like I said, they're moving out of here. They're moving up. They go. They go into different things. And again, here's something that. Sell whatever product you're selling, sell. Going back to what the gentleman said, sell it for the higher spirit, the spirituality, the spirit of the soul. Bring up the warmth, goodness, kindness, and love of the human spirit rather than all this ugly crap that they keep selling us day after day. And it could change like that. You know, again, going back, I have a photograph of my parents, their wedding, 1932. I got it in one of my books. They made a movie out of this uh, with Zizzy Gave Honey Boy. Zizzy's the Neapolitan dialect for auntie. That woman, Doris Roberts, who played the mother of um, uh, on that Everyone Loves Raymond show, her last starring role was playing my aunt in this movie, and Doris Roberts died 15 minutes into it. You get it on the internet, uh, uh, Zizi and Honey Boy, Z-I-Z-I. -Z -I. I don't know if you can see that picture. That's my parents' wedding, 1934. You look at the way they're dressed, the Buffets, the Gates, the Bezos. Couldn't come close to these people. My father worked in a fish store. My aunts worked in, in factories and uncles were construction workers. The dignity, the style, that's what we have to bring back. And anybody, Google, go to YouTube, go to Soundies, S-O-U-N-D-I-E-S, and then put black music of the 1940s. Soundies, black music of the 1940s. Woof, you see these cats and these ch chicks, man, dressed, cool, whoa. Music, heartwarming, loving, 
Where is it now? It's one bad rap. And I appreciate being on with you, but I feel very offended that we didn't talk about Taylor Swift. Well, what about Taylor Swift? She, she gets sex less. I mean, you know, what am I going to hear about this crap for? I mean, this, this is the stupidity. In, yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate being on. Thank you for what you're doing. And everyone listening to what Josh is doing, because he's not only speaking it, he's living it. And he's bringing the spirit into his children and, and into society. You and your wife, what you're creating is mwah, good for you. God bless you. Thank you. And, and uh, you're doing great work, too, at Trends Journal. Thank you so much. Folks, everybody follow Gerald Salenti on Twitter, on X. I, I didn't even know. Now it's called X. It's a, 163,000 followers on X, so make sure you follow him. And Gerald, always great to have you on. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for all you do.